Hey, what's up everyone? This is a review for the Camper CP622B. So here's the box. I did do an unboxing video, so do check that out. If you didn't get a chance yet. So it's a pretty minimalist, there's not too much that comes in it. A basic unboxing experience. So they did put most of the money towards the IEM. And then there's a cleaning cloth and then a tool to clean the nozzle of the IEM. So initially, let's talk about the build, cable, and fit. So the cable's mediocre. It's just alright. And then the build is nice. It's like a custom fit. It is on the larger size. So if you have very small ears, you might have a hard time getting these to fit. And my ears are on the smaller side. So it does get painful after maybe hours of use. So I do have to take a break. But uh, because of the bone conduction driver... Basically what's happening is they need a lot of space for that to shine. Um, and basically the bone conduction, it takes up a lot of space. So you do need to have a good amount of space between the drivers for the bone conduction. And it takes up quite a bit of volume. So that's why it's a pretty chunky fit. But I can live with it as long as it sounds good. So yeah, this is a pretty cool shell design. Nice shine. So yeah, now let's talk about the sound quality on these. So before I get into the specifics, um, I'll talk about these IEMs. So I would say this IEM has a pretty reference sound. It doesn't really over exaggerate any specific frequency. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty referency tuned IEM that has enormous amounts of detail and it's good for long listening sessions because the lower mids, there's a slight bit of warmth that comes in. So sometimes when you're listening to vocals, you might want a little bit more of that breadth or that air, but because of that slight bit of warmth, the vocals don't come across the most airy. And I think they did that for a reason, so the treble doesn't sound annoying or harsh, maybe. And I'll get into specific songs and tracks that I tried. So yeah, that's how I would describe these, like an overview. It's like a reference sound signature which doesn't emphasize any particular part in the frequency range so let's talk about the bass first so this is one of the first iems that i tried that has a bone conduction driver in it and it does have two per side so i will say so like the sub bass itself the sub bass itself is not very boosted it's just present and there. It sounds completely reference, but it's not overly bass head sub bass. It's just sub bass done incredibly well without it being bass head level, essentially. And then the part that stood out to me on these is like that 50 to 100 hertz region. So not exactly directly the sub bass hit, but when you listen to explosives, and more of that reverberating bass sound. These things absolutely smack. Like that 50 to 100 hertz. You hear so much of a visceral slam and impact. And just like the foundation of the bass is insane. And it's the best bass I've ever heard. Not in terms of amount but just the quality and the way it rumbles, how well controlled it is, how it never gets in the way of anything, but it has so much impact, slam, and punch for days. So there wasn't a single time where I thought 
I wanted more bass or I wish this track the bass it's the bass sounded less because it was getting in the way I never got a sense of that the bass is just like perfectly implemented or very close to being perfect uh yeah I really can't find a fault with the way the bass sounds if you're a bass head, you might want a few more decibels in the sub bass, maybe. But really, I never thought that the bass was lacking in any manner. So it's one of the strongest points of this I am. The bass is just visceral, powerful, and you really feel it in your ear, which I can't really say about many I am. So it's just very powerful bass. So yeah, they the conduction driver is doing something. So excellent bass. Not only sub bass, but the mid bass, the uh, bass drum, anything that has a heavier bass sound. All instruments sound excellent. They don't really get covered up at all. Yeah, that's how the bass sounds. And then now let's talk about the mid range and vocals. So. The vocals themselves aren't extremely forward. So it's not like a Harmon set where the vocal themselves are very forward. This could be due to the 1 to 2k region being slightly cut down. And yeah, so the vocals for male and female, they're not very, very forward. It's very, very track dependent. If you have a track that's recorded with vocals sounding very forward and excessive gain... That's how you're going to hear it. But then if you're listening to the track where the vocals are dimmed out, at times the vocals can sound slightly in the background, just slightly from where I'd want it to be. But that's a very small nitpick. And then piano, instrument, trumpets, guitars. Uh, the, the instruments on these, they just sound true to life. Like, everything just sounds very, very large. And it's like everything is so incisive. And I can clearly pinpoint where the instruments are. But not only that, it's just how large the instruments sound. So I think that bone conduction is aiding the mid-range. I think it's providing more gain. And it's able to sustain instruments longer. And... It's just like a little bit of that extra reverb, kind of what the U12T does. It feels like everything's just staying in the soundstage, in the th three-dimensional ball a little bit longer than other IEMs. And it's just very, very immersive with all vocals, most instruments. Everything just really pops out on these. And it's once you listen to these, then you really do get the idea of how insane it actually sounds so yeah I've, i would say the bass and the mids are the strong point uh the only weakness i would say in the mids is that the lower mids it introduces a slight bit of warmth so you do miss a little bit of vocal air and nuance it's very obvious And then the treble attempts could sound a little bit soft, just lacking a little bit of sparkle at times. Uh, but it's not a major issue, it's just how the tuning is, I guess. So I do have some examples. So the first track was Bar Getting Tipsy by Shibuzi. This is a pretty popular song. So the bass is intense on it, on this track. The mids, the instruments, very large sounding. The separation is impeccable. Treble is very smooth. So for this track, I don't mind the treble being very smooth in that it's missing uh, that slight bit of vocal breathiness. Because honestly, for this type of song, it's like a club song, a bar type of song. So you just want to hear the bass and mids. You don't really care about the vocal breathiness. But when you're listening to classical music and you want to hear that extra bit of air in the vocalist, that's where it's lacking. And then the treble is very smooth. Maybe lacking a bit of excitement, but not nothing major. 
Uh, say, and then Breathe In by Ariana Grande. It doesn't have too much mid bass. Mid bass. It has great impact. The 50 to 100 hertz on those hits really pops out. And then Lower Mids does introduce a slight bit of warmth again. Uh, but overall, this track is rendered excellently on this IEM. Both of these songs. And then the treble is just very smooth and incisive. I'm basically getting like pockets of sounds like you hear pockets of air in between each element in the track which is exactly what you want in an im of this price range and then a song i wanted to highlight is never give up on your dreams i don't know if you guys could see but it's never give up on your dreams by two steps from hell so the bass just fully immerses you the mids are full bodied and clear, just amazing. And then the treble is smooth and it sparkles just the right amount. So this track, it feels like I'm using the full potential of this IEM. And the IEM is just giving it its all. So just amazing to listen to, guys. I, I was getting chills with the way the bass was sounding and the mids coming in and the treble all at once. It's just an absolute delight to listen to. And then here I had some notes. So the human voice can sound slightly warm at times. Maybe it's a slight bit of the EST timbre or the tuning. And then this tuning ensures there's no fatigue or annoying sharpness. Sub bass impact is excellent. 50 to 100 hertz will sound more bass heavy than the sub bass itself. And this is prominent when you listen to Homecoming by Kanye. The way the bass hits, it's very, very prominent. That 50 to 100 hertz range. So yeah, that's that. So now let's get into how the details are and the sound stage. So the sound stage is very, very three-dimensional. It's almost like there's a globe around your head and you hear things in very, very a large image. So I would say, yeah, the soundstage is definitely 3D and holographic, among the best I've ever heard. And then the imaging, I would give it a solid 10 out of 10. So if you guys follow my channel, my favorite imaging IEM was a Sony IER M9. And this easily wipes it out. So this is my best imaging IEM now, I guess. And then the details, I would give a 9.5 out of 10. It's amazing, excellent, close to being perfect, best I've heard. However, like I said, it's lacking a slight bit of air in the upper octaves and maybe a slight bit of vocal nuance air. And I think that's because of that slight bit of warmth in the lower mids. That's like my only real complaint. So the treble, I'd give an 8.5 out of 10. Mids, I'd give a 9 out of 10. The bass, I'd give a 9.5 out of 10. Soundstage, 9.5 out of 10. Imaging, 10 out of 10. And then the detail, 9.5 out of 10. And then overall recommendation, overall, I'd rate these a 10 out of 10. It's just the best IM I've ever heard. It does treble, it does mids, it does bass. All the images are fully fleshed out. Classical is what you would want to use these IEMs for because of the sheer amount of detail and resolution. And you really want to find the best tracks you can find with these because they're that good. And it makes the details pop out so easily. It's like effortless. And you're going to want to keep searching through tracks that have more detail, more detail. And this just soaks out everything. So if you want one of the best IEMs in the world and money doesn't really matter, then I think this is a pretty good IEM to buy. And I could see it being as basically an endgame IEM. Uh, if they did want to improve upon this, I think try to make the mids a little more forward if you can, but it's not that big of a deal. And then try to get rid of that lower mid warmth. 
so you don't miss a, a slight bit of air with vocals and it sounds slightly hazy at times but yeah that's it that's all they can improve the bass is nearly perfect mids are excellent all-rounder and the treble is very smooth and present so can't really complain 10 out of 10 guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this review if you have any questions let me know and the first time i listened to these i listened to them for i think four to six hours straight i could not put them down and i really couldn't believe what i was hearing So that's my review on these, just excellent. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you guys found this video help helpful. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.